active noise cancelling. It's almost a buzzword nowadays with headphones. Hey, noise cancelling is good because you know it ruins audio. Noise. Doesn't matter how good your headphones are if another annoying noise is getting in and spoiling it. It's like with all this active noise cancelling business, you know, even super cheap headphones have active noise cancelling now. We've forgotten about the true noise cancelling. Passive. Oh, mate, the, these are from the workshop next door. Let's just say, mate, they've had a few teddy bear picnics already. Mate, passive noise cancelling, where there is no electronics. It's literally blocking the sound out. Sound is just air pressure, air waves. You block them out, they don't get in. You don't hear them. Now, surely someone out there in the world has just looked at a pair of earmuffs and gone, Whoa, they kind of look like headphones, hey? Except there's no speaker bits in it. Whoa. What if someone took, like, studio-accredited headphones, like these MDR7506s, and, like, just took the guts out of this, and then just put them in earmuffs? Well, mate, that's the whole point of this video, because, yes, somebody has done it! The GK Music Ultraphones. <laughs> now we're talking, baby. These are 3M Pelter earmuffs with Sony MDR7506 drivers put in it. Like, there's no secrets about this. This is two products smashed into one and smashed beautifully. Like, you, I mean, if you just look under this little sticker, you can actually make out the 3M logo still. <laughs> but the fitment's great. All the, like, the holes for the wiring run through the headband. So, I mean, just to talk about the Sonys a bit, uh, these first came out in the 90s, if you couldn't tell. And, like, my pair actually is from the 90s. You can tell because the terrible coily cable, I hate coily cables, is, like, very fatigued and dry. Droopy. And I'm sorry to report that, no, they do not come with these amazing looking teal ear cups, even though Sony should, since it's the same color they use on this professional sticker here. You know, I got these aftermarket at some point. These are in studios everywhere. <laughs> like, now that you've seen them, I'm sure that you just can't unsee them. Whenever you see, like, people walking through studios, there's going to be heaps of these hung up everywhere. And because in the audio scene, these are a bargain. You know, you see top of the line audio engineer headphones, you, like, uh-huh. <laughs> Whereas these are ones you can just have on the racks for anyone just to grab and use for any sort of work. And they're so good that they've been making them this whole time. You can still get these. <laughs> and then just taking the speakers and putting them in like really good industrial earmuffs. These block out 29 decibels. That's huge. Now, you've probably already done a bit of Googling going, oh, well, you can get these for like a little over 100 bucks. You can get a set of these for like 50 bucks. And GK are asking this much, mate. Why, why don't I just build my own? <laughs> exactly right. Just go and do it. It's a heaps good idea. But I mean, I gotta tell you, good luck doing it this good. It's so legit. <laughs> I love how deep these ear cups are. And look, you can see the drivers down in there. Although one bummer, <laughs> it's got the coily cable. These are a really, really small operation. I'll put it this way. When I got mine last year, it had a handwritten paper receipt in there. I love small businesses like that. A lot of the big ones are making absolute crap. So about time the little guys come along to save us. All right, let's get to sound. I can't pair them against these because I don't think these are working quite right. <laughs> There's something unhappy about them. These are ancient anyways. Mate, we'll just compare them to the Herder 600s by old mate Senny and the freakish ears on a stand. <laughs> So these are a little bit boomier and they've got more top end like you know tit tit pit pit and cymbal noises and stuff. It can get a bit bitey <laughs> but I guess that's what EQ is for because these are earmuffs first and then their headphones. And it's like why? Why would I want headphones like this? Well I play the drums and I played the drums professionally and I learned about these from the drum scenes because the founder of GK Music is a drummer and that's like that's what these were built for because the drums are maniacally loud it's really hard to noise cancel and hear the track cleanly and this is a real problem for a lot of drummers that this isn't an original idea the direct sound extreme isolation headphones so they'd be looking pretty cool huh and these ain't cheap either mate and i actually got these from my local music shop non-coily cable it's got a split off bit nice proper length on this because you know if you're doing studio work that's what you want this length for i had heard 
heard a lot about these. These tend to be a lot of people's first pick when it comes to drummers earmuffs sort of thing. And I'm here to report the pair that I've gotten are absolute garbage. Look at the headband. You see that? Because the first time I got it down, it won't come back. Oh, I got... Oh, that... Get up. Ow, my thumb! These are made out of pure garboleum. These are... A Abysmally terrible. <laughs> Maybe they're good at some point. There are some companies that do that where they start off good and they just start weaning it off over time until you're paying full price for nothing. A lot of more recent reviews are saying that they are made of literal rubbish. Look at the stress reliefs in these. Look, they're, they're not even, they're barely even holding in there. Let's have a listen. So, one of my ear cups is already dead. <laughs> it's already dead! I didn't get a dodgy pair online, I got these from a local store. And as earmuffs, they're nowhere near as good. Oh, try and fight the pelt as much. And what's really annoying, you could do the trick that I've always done until I could afford stuff like this. Just get some cheap in-ears and put earmuffs over top. It's actually what I do in my drum stream. And even the one ear cup that was working okay, I'm not dazzled by that sound at all. I'm very spoilt with the headphones that I listen to, but then, mate, GK's just... These are worth the extra money, especially since, like, these are basically busted right out the gates. 250 bucks, are you kidding me? And even as earmuffs, they're nowhere near as good as these. Nowhere near as good. Again, you might as well just get some in-ears and a set of these pelters to put over top. Really disappointing. Really disappointing. These have been absolute heroes for me in some points. Uh, having to do video editing in very noisy environments. My last warehouse was miserable for noise and these were just, oh, they saved the day. <laughs> and hey, some people like to wear big headphones in public because it sells a vibe of, don't talk to me, I'm not listening. Um, I don't think it says more than this. I actually used these last year in a recording session. That was fun getting to play my vintage drums. And that place just had the coolest things. And these were lifesavers. Like being able to cancel that much noise, it means I can barely hear my drum kit through these. And then what you can do is actually have the recording of the drum kit coming in so I can hear what it actually sounds like in the recording. Like, oh. That's special. You can't get that from these. That said, I do have some suggestions. If they made these little tweaks, <laughs> these things would be unstoppable. Um, replace this with an aux in, please. So we can just plug in any old cable. I despise the coily cable. It's so, it's a long cable when you need it and a short one when you want it. But then you just get this big heavy lump when you don't want a long cable. And when you need it long, you need to pull it and stretch it, which adds tension, it pulls on your head. These suck, stop it. Stop putting these with anything. Just make that so you can just pull it out. And the glues that are used to put this together or whatever materials, um, they really stink. Kind of like vinegar. And it has honestly taken about a year for it to finally play out. Yeah, it's, it's finally gone. I remember I actually struggled to wear them at first. <laughs> but these have been viciously reliable. You just smash them into your bag, they're going to be fine. They nailed the studio sessions. They helped me in times when I need to edit in peace. I use these all the time. I'm doing a video about these because I'm a happy customer and I feel like these are the best kept secret at the moment. If you want the crazy noise cancelling without any of the crappy like Bluetooth and batteries and software updates and borkings and whatnot, BOOM! GK Ultra Phones. The name is cool, that's how you know they're good. They are a small business and so I'm sorry if I've given them like the touch of death. <laughs> <laughs> by directing so many people at them. Well, that's your fault, mate, for making such good stuff, huh? You brought this on yourself. Nah, thanks, but, you know. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because, mate, $1 a month, I do extra videos. There are extra videos on Garbage Time, which is my car thing, and the drum thing, which is my drum thing, and float playing, where I do streams and things. But, mate, one bug extra. I like looking for pointless things. Yeah, uh, this video has nothing to do with headphones or anything. It's, um, I found all these adverts for just vintage stuff. La phone. <laughs> I got heaps of them. They're, they're odd, and we're just going to smile and laugh at them. So thanks so much, mate. I'll see you next time.
I'm afraid after Frank's uh, frankly awful feeding that happened last week, uh, there's been no activity from the Chonklin at, at all. She's just kind of just been sitting in this box and, and, and that's it. <gasps> Frankie. Well? Say the thing. We rehearsed weeks for this, Frank. This is unbelievable. 